hewala na karibu kwenye mizizi ya habari. Tunaanza na habari kuwa mchechetu wa kisiasa katika kambi ya wandani wa naibu wa rais William Ruto kuhusiana na mkataba kati ya rais Kenyatta na kiongozi wa upinzani Raila la Odinga umedhihirisha kuwa swala la ni nani atakayemridhi rais Kenyatta haliko wazi. Viongozi wa kisiasa wanayegemea upande wa naibu wa rais William Ruto wamekuwa kidai kuwa kiongozi wa ODM Raila Odinga ananuia kumuondoa Ruto katika urithi wa kisiasa mwaka 2022. Mwanahabari wetu Irene Mwangi ana kina cha taarifa hii. Wakati wa kampeni za kisiasa za mwaka 2017 naye Bryce William Ruto alikuwa na mkejeli kiongozi wa upinzani Raila Odinga kwa kumuita jamaa wa vitendawili. Nasema kura ni ya uhuru Kenyatta ama bwana vitendawili? Kina kikawa kuwa jamaa huyo wa vitendawili ameweza kujiunga na kufanya kazi pamoja na serikali ya Jubilee kupitia maelewano yake na Rais Uhuru Kenyatta jambo ambalo limeleta mshawasha katika ngome ya kisiasa ya naye Bryce William Ruto hii kijionesha kwa wazi kwani viongozi walio karibu na naye Bryce wakiongozwa na kiongozi wa wengi katika bunge la seneti Kipchumba Murkomen wameonyesha hofu yao I have looked at Raila Odinga he looks like a duck walks like a duck, he quacks like a politician, he is ready for 2022. And I want to tell him we are so ready for that competition when it comes 2022. Ingawa baada maelewano kati ya Rais Uhuru na Odinga na Bryce na viongozi wengine waliopongeza wawili hao, hivi sasa mambo ni tofauti. So alikiwa kuwa Odinga atawania au kumuunga mkono kiongozi mwingine ambaye si naye Bryce William Ruto katika uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022 mchanganuzi Martin Ngati aelezea zaidi So the DP Ruto camp naturally would be alarmed but I said it I'm on record as saying that uh, Raila was basically repositioning and uh, reinventing himself for the 2022 contest Historia imenakili kuwa kiongozi wa upinzani Raila Odinga na Nai Bryce walikuwa marafiki wa karibu katika uchaguzi wa mwaka 2007 walipokuwa katika chama cha ODM hasa wakati ambapo ilidaiwa kuwa ushindi wa Odinga uliibiwa katika uchaguzi huo. Anaenda wenye anasimama na yeye kama orengo jana wanatoa maneno kidogo kidogo wanaanza kusema oh he's the only candidate of 2022. Hivi sasa wawili hao hawapatani katika masuala ya kisiasa na Bryce akimuona Odinga kama ambaye anataka kuingilia na anataka kukatiza safari yake ya kuingia ikulu. Kwani mshauri mkuu wa Odinga Seneta Wasia James Rengo amesikika akisema ni kinukuu wale ambao wanadhani kuwa Raila hata usika na masuala ya kisiasa watashtuka mno. Kiongozi wangu bado anahemea kiti cha rights mwisho wa nukuu. Odinga hata hivyo amejitenga na kauli hiyo na kutaja ni kinukuu. Juhudi zangu ni kuunganisha nchi na azma yangu na Rais Uhuru ni kuleta nchi pamoja na kutatua mambo ambayo yamewatanganisha watu kwa miaka mingi. Usemi huu ukiwata wengi na maswali ikiwa Odinga amejiondoa kabisa katika ulingo wa kisiasa au ni karata tu ya muda. Raila is a master of double speak. Yeah, so when he tells you that he's not running then he, he means he's going to run. Mkutano kati ya Odinga na Rais Mustafa Daniel Arap Moi umezua kiwewe katika kambi ya kisiasa na Bryce hasa kuhusiana na uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022. Hii kizingatiwa kuwa mkutano kati ya Nae Bryce na Mzee Moi ulitibuka lawama ikiwekelewa seneta wa Baringo Kidion Moi. I don't think that was a very prudent move. That was reactionary. Ruto panicked because Raila was going to see Mzee Moi. So he should also not have uh, run there and invited you know. Yeah, we see a combination of uh, the Odingas, the uh, Kenyatas and uh, the Moyes on one side and William Ruto and the rest of the team on the other side. Swala likiwa uhasima ulio kati ya Nai Bryce William Ruto na kiongozi wa upinzani Raila Odinga utaelekea wapi? Kwani viongozi hawa wawili ni wakakamavu na hivi sasa ambapo wote wanafanya kazi na serikali, uchaguzi wa mwaka 2022 utakuwa vipi? Uh, Uhuru has never been on record as uh, saying that he'll support William Ruto. Yeah, so uh, you cannot be sure whether he will su support him. You can also not be very sure whether he will uh, not mind succeeding uh, succeeding himself. Katika hotuba ya kitaifa Rais Uhuru hakuelezea bayana kuhusiana maelewano yake na kiongozi wa upinzani. Wengi wakijiuliza je, maelewano ya urithi wa kisiasa kati ya Uhuru na Ruto yapo? 
hadi wakati ambapo hayo yataeleweka mchecheto wa kisiasa kuhusiana na Odinga kufanya kazi na serikali utaendelea kuwepo. Irwin Mwangi KTV Nairobi. Mwafaka baina ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Kenara Upinzani Raila Odinga umezua tumbo joto miongoni mwa viongozi serikalini huku wengi wakiona kama matarisho kwa ajili ya uchaguzi mkuu wa 2022 na kama mwanahabari wetu Victor Nabiso anavyotuarifu mwafaka huo haufai kujumuisha viongozi wa upinzani serikalini kwani ni tofauti na ule wa 2008 kati ya Raila Odinga na Rais Mstafu Mwai Kibaki Huyu ni kinara wa upinzani nchini Raila Odinga hapa akiingia katika bustani la uhuru tarehe 25 Oktoba mwaka uliopita Kamanda huyo upinzani ambaye ana wafuasi zaidi ya milioni tano nchini aliwataka wafuasi wake kususia marudio ya uchaguzi wa rais baada ya mahakama kufutilia mbali ushindi wa rais Kenyatta katika uchaguzi wa Agosti nane. Hawezi kufanya uchaguzi wa yao wao wenyewe tunasema wao watoke nje kwanza. Hii ni moja kati ya matukio mengi yaliyotoa taswira ya vuta ni kuvute kati ya serikali na upinzani. Lakini sasa hali hii imechukua mkondo mpya tangu viongozi hao wawili walipokutana na kusalamiana katika jumba la Arambe tarehe tisa mwezi Machi mwaka huu. Hatua ya wawili hao iliyonuiwa kuleta ushikamano kati ya viongozi ambao hawali hawakuwa wanaonana jicho kwa jicho haijapokelewa vyema na viongozi wote serikalini haswa upande wa naibu wa rais William Ruto hatua hiyo iliyokuwa na ari ya kuunganisha taifa ambalo lilikuwa limegawanywa na matokeo ya uchaguzi mkuu uliopita ubabe uliokuwepo kati ya upinzani na viongozi serikalini sasa haupo tena kufuatia mwafaka baina ya rais Uhuru Kenyatta na kiongozi wa upinzani nchini Raila Odinga hata hivyo hatua hii uenda ikalemaza juhudi za upinzani katika kupigania haki za mwananchi wa kawaida nchini. Mchanganuzi wa masuala ya kisiasa na mwanasheria wa kikatiba ndungu wa inaina anaamini hatua hii haitalemaza shughuli za upinzani kwa kuwa tofauti na wa mwaka wa nane kati ya Odinga na Rais Mstaafu Mwai Kibaki mwafaka huu haujaangaziwa kikatiba. Then part of that accord was anchored in the constitution and that's how we created we amended the constitution to now create the position of the office of the prime minister kumekuepo na mapendekezo ya kufanyia katiba marekebisho ili kubadili mfumo uongozi nchini mapendekezo ambayo ndungu anasema japo yamesadifiana na mwafaka wa rais Kenyatta na Odinga haifai kuhusishwa na makubaliano hayo There is nowhere in the statement of March 9 they talked about amendment of a constitution. There is nowhere they talked about changing the structure and character of the executive. It was purely things they wanted to work on. Yaliomo katika mwafaka huo ni pamoja na kuzima vita vya kikabila na mashindano nchini, kushirikishwa kwa wote katika ugatuzi kumaliza siasa za migawanyiko na kuimarisha usalama nchini mengine yaliyoangaziwa ni haki za kibinadamu kuzingatiwa usawa katika ugavi wa rasilimali na vita dhidi ya ufisadi ndungu anasema iwapo kuna nia ya kuwaleta wakenya pamoja basi hilo litafikiwa pasi na kubuni nafasi kwa ajili ya kujumuisha viongozi wa upinzani serikalini because it is like The, we are confusing the hardship of two gentlemen agreement and now we want to give it a constitutional meaning yet the constitution is very specific when you are dealing with the structure and character of the constitution it has to be done in a popular consultative process but hata kabla ya jopo kazi la watu 14 lililotwi kwa jukumu kuu la kuanzisha uiano nchini kuanza shughuli hiyo wanapaswa kuhamasisha wakenya kuhusu yaliyomo katika makubaliano hayo Victor Nabiswa KUTV Toke songa mbele ni kuwa ununuzi wa ardhi na kulipa fidia kuathiriwa umekuwa kigezo kikubwa kwa serikali hasa wakati wa kutekeleza mradi wa Lapset mradi huu ambao utakarimu wa Kenya shilingi trilioni 2.5 utatekelezwa na kampuni 
ya ujenzi ya Uchina na inatarajiwa kukamilisha egesho, egesho la kwanza la meli katika bandari ya Lamu katikati ya mwaka huu. Mradi huu umetajwa kama mojawapo ya miradi mikubwa ambayo serikali ya Kenya inaweza kupitia ufali kutoka Uchina. Kukamilika kwa mradi huu utakuwa moja wapo wa mafanikio ya serikali ambayo ni kusulisha swala la ajira kwa vijana. Lakini wakati huu Majaji wa Mahakama Kuu wameamuru serikali kuwalipa fidia waathiri wa mradi huu kitita cha shilingi bilioni 1.76. Uamuzi huu unajiri baada ya wavuvi kuwasilisha kesi mahakamani na kudai kuwa wajalipo fidia kutoka mradi huu uanze. Licha ya mradi huo kuwa na madhara kwa mazingira na pia mandhari. Jambo ambalo linamkera mwenyekiti wa mradi huo Mohamed Swazuri. No one whose land will be taken away for these projects will be left without compensation. In the, in the area where we have uh, acquired for the start of the port, we adopted, it, a decision was made to adopt the money for land compensation, which we did here, yeah, 1.5 million per acre and so on. Licha mahakma kugundua kwa serikali lishindo kufuata kanuni za mazingira ambayo alikuwa mewekwa na halma shauri ya mazingira nchini ya almarufu nema na wakati ukiwa mtata ambaye anajulikana kuwa msaru wa mbele kupinga mradi wa serikali isiyofuata kanuni za sheria na mtazamo mwingine But the problem we have is that once we hit on a development idea conservation becomes relegated out of the it kicks out kicked out of the equation and we proceed like we're working in a vacuum and that's that's the importance of the Lamu decision that the environment cannot be taken for granted that you must factor in all things you must have a comprehensive assessment before you even begin doing the EIS you must do the strategic environmental assessment to cover the, the whole length of the project so when you now begin doing EIS of the whatever the master plan is a, a complete one so to me i think the government has shot itself in the foot by choosing to ignore mradi huu utagarimu shilingi trilioni 2.5 Natajio kupitia katika county ya Isiolo, Garissa, Laikipia, Marsabit, Moyale na Turukana. Lakini pesa zinazo tumika kutekeleza mradi huu, zinazo mjadala kutoko mwanarakati huu. If we just cut down on corruption, we are losing, we are losing money when, when they estimated about 30% of the budget is being lost. What do you do? If, if it's an, inst, an investment, that's an investment that should produce more than a trillion shillings. Mradi wa Lapset ambao utaunganisha Kenya, Sudan, Kusini na Ethiopia unatarajiwa kufungua nafasi za ajira 1400 kwa wakazi wa Lamu. Bandari ya Lamu itakuwa na maeneo 32 ya kuegesha meli huku ujenzi wa eneo la kwanza ukitarajiwa kukamilika mwezi Juni mwaka 2018. Mradi wa Lapset unatarajiwa kugarimu zaidi ya dola bilioni 26 kukamilika. Anne Meshezit